Great. All right, so perfect. Um, thank you so much, Shade, for your presence and for your patience and for your <laughs> for everything really. Um, I yes. want to ask you, since on 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 the topic of presence and on the idea of presence, how are some of the ways that you're finding presence right now in your space, whether it's with yourself? with the people around you, with the divine? Like, how are you locating, how f finding presence for you these days? Hmm, well, um, presence to me is definitely, it's energy, right? You know, you, you meet people and you feel, you feel their, their, their presence, their energy, their vibe, like that, that is, is, you know the first thing when you meet people or when you enter a space you feel like oh i, I feel good here or mm -hmm. this this isn't for me mm -hmm. um so for me presence is also about mindfulness because i take a lot of care into myself who i am the energy around me because i do believe that it is contagious what i bring into a room is it's supposed to uplift, it's supposed to, to be kind, it's supposed to receive and, and give with, with, with kindness and good intentions all the time. Um, uh, so, so for me, presence is, is definitely confidence. It's, it's a knowing of self, it's, a, it's you know, you, your head held high and your back straight and you like, you walk into a room and you feel it, people feel you. Mm -hmm. And that's important for me because energy is important. When I'm gonna give, it, it is literally what I'm gonna get back. So, mm -hmm. so I'm just mindful of that now, that, mm -hmm. that it, it could have an impact on, on the space, mm -hmm. on the people that I'm around for mm -hmm. sure. You know? Absolutely, and so you you mentioned something about um, that that w that process of giving and receiving. Mm -hmm. Did you have any point in your life where you felt as though it was a challenge for you to navigate that energy, like what people might have been, oh. what you wasn't given that people were getting, or, or vice versa, like what people were just kind of sending you away, and you're like, no, yeah. I, I don't want this. Um, exactly those boundaries like how have you negotiated that negotiated that for yourself in the past and yeah and but it's it's taken a long time to get to this space and I'm, and every day i'm still learning i'm still a student um however i feel what had happened before was i didn't know myself um i didn't know my power i didn't know you know my beauty i didn't know who i didn't know me you know, so it was very easy for my power to be taken away, or, or should I say, I gave it away, you know, because mm. I, I have to take responsibility now, you mm. know, for, for my actions and what I be, way I put myself, because I did that, no one else did. However, mm. my, I gave my power away. I, I wore a mask. I, you wow. know, you walk in a room, sometimes you want to fit in, sometimes, you know, you want to be in, in, in certain environments you you know so it's it's really difficult to it took me a long time should i say to get to a space where i fully understand who i am and that knowing of who i am You're good. I'm hearing you. I'm seeing you. Just uh, sorry, something just I don't know. Zoom sent a message. <laughs> Amazing. Zoom is interrupting us. <laughs> <laughs> they don't want us to be great. <laughs> but yeah, you get a gist of of, mm -hmm. of what I'm thinking. Yeah. Right. And so you brought up also this um, idea of being a student or or being in this space of always learning, like. Where are you yeah. finding studenthood for yourself these days? Like, where are you learning from and who's teaching you? Whether it's whatever, as wide as that question could possibly be, where are your sites of learning right now? Yeah. Life. <laughs> sure. Life. Yeah. Uh, uh, like, a, a huge teacher. But what I've come to 
to, to realize is that we all have this innate sense of self instincts and, you know, feeling and, you know, it, it starts with, with me. There's no, there's, there's loads of books you could read, you could go to church, you could, there's so many, you know, things that you could follow. Yeah. But now I am tapping into this innate sense of self. What works for me? Mm. What am I learning here? Do mm. I know myself? Where, you know, what space do I want to be in? What purpose do I have? What do I want to create for myself? You know, so it's, it's almost at a stage where now I'm, 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 I'm deconstructed a, a certain ideal that I've been conditioned to, to believe wow. my entire life. Wow. And now I'm like, well, no, I, I want to do things out of, of, of love, out of feeling, out of knowing that I, it's, it's me, it's mine. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so that is one. Two, mm -hmm. um, silence. Silence is a, is a great teacher for me meditation, silence, being able, I tell you, being able to sit with yourself, face yourself in mm. silence, just literally watch yourself. A lot of people can't do that. It, it takes a lot of bravery to be with yourself and love yourself. Um, so the silence is teaching me a lot, you know, not just, not just in my own space, but when I'm, I'm, I'm in groups, I'm with people, I'm in family, I listen, you know, sometimes it's just, you know, so that definitely, um, when it comes to, to being a student, it, it's, it's, it's that, it's silence, it's knowing who I am, um, that self-love, that innate gut feeling that ancestral kind of like understanding that you could tap into mm. that would guide you trust me it, it's it's teaching me <laughs> a lot mm. a lot mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. a lot of people have been expressing that they feel as though um I don't know for us having entered quarantine this season of quarantine and this season of being with ourselves <laughs> first and yeah. foremost yeah. um oh. There's been like this acceleration um, uh -huh. in in that whole vein that you were just describing. Have you experienced that at all or not? Or are you still kind of in the same or similar space than you were before? Like, what is that journey for you, pre and post like quarantine? Well, pre, I feel I was kind of doing this. <laughs> yeah, of course. I, I had a bit of a thing going on. Um, <laughs> And I was in my own space a lot, you know, so I do feel that there are a lot of people who were already tapping into that energy and into that space, people who are doing the work. So when this crazy shift, this crazy time happened, I think, not that I'm saying it was easy, but I believe that there are people who, the, the people who are already doing the work, it was almost a time to breathe it, it was like you know it wasn't as hard because it's like well actually i faced myself i've sat in the silence i've sat in the not being able to leave your house and and i've, I've sat in and listened to my mind i've cried and i've i've i did everything <laughs> and then this covid you know this this time right now i know it's hard for a lot of people because you're forced to face yourself, mm. you know, there's the, you can't put on a, a mask and hide. Can't, it's just, mm. it's, it's there mm. and you have to step into it, you know? Wow. Yeah. So a lot hasn't shifted for me. This mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've never made that distinction before. So thank you so much for that, Shadi, in terms of like, understanding there's certain things one is needing to confront in oneself versus like being forced to have it like into having to do that when you yeah. don't want to like that in the absence of that willingness right um yeah. so that's huge that is so huge um and perhaps one of the greater frustrations that people might be experiencing at this time yeah yeah it's um, hard hard yeah it, it, it's almost like you're in a vulnerable state you're in a vulnerable state of being, but uh, a lesson for me 
um, in my early 20s. I'm in my 30s, mid now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but in my early 20s, I watched um, a TED talk on Green Brown. And it, she did a TED talk on vulnerability. Mm. And I watched this TED talk and had to just <laughs> drop everything and start just go for a walk because I was like, what the hell is this? <laughs> wow. What is this? You know, because I, and this is the, the mindfulness and the, well, the spiritual wellness is so important for me and for me to collectively get this thing going mm. is in my, in my teens, you know, I'm, I was very emotional. I was very compassionate. I was, you know, I, I see someone hurting and I might cry because I'm feeling what they're feeling, <laughs> you know, or it, it was just, you, you just have this difference about it. There's something different, you know, you, you, you're sensitive, you know? So I always looked at that as being weak. I was like, what's wrong with me? Why am I crying again? <laughs> Why am I feeling this? I don't want to feel this. This isn't what I want to feel right now. So you kind of maneuver in trying to avoid the vulnerability. But what I learned that has changed my life is that that vulnerability, and I know people have heard this before, that vulnerability is a strength. Yeah. It is a strength. And when I realized that it was a strength that, it meant that I am still human. I could still feel. I still have compassion. I still love. I, I could forgive. I could heal. That vulnerability allows you to do that. What the, the struggle is, is the balance, the coping mechanisms, because that's where we kind of get a bit, you know, uh, not lost, but it, the, the imbalance, it's like, all the time on a roller coaster. Mm -hmm. And that's where the coping mechanisms come into play. This is where being a student, this is where the meditation and the Reiki and the prayers, if you want church, if you want gardening, whatever it is that works for you, you know, it, 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 it's that search. And in that search, that's where the balance starts to happen and you start to lift and realize, well, there's actually strength and power here. This is no weakness. I feel and I'm human. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah, it's 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 interesting. Right. So we've just been talking for a few minutes and I'm already crying. Thanks, Shade. <laughs> Don't make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> no, because yo um I don't know, like one of the I think greatest gifts of this moment is to <sighs> I, I don't even know where this thought is coming from, but um, I just feel like empathy is such a hugely important thing to have for us to have at this. Like it's serving me the most it has ever served me before in my yeah. life. Yeah. yeah. In, the different, mm -hmm. in the different ways that it shows up, whether it's like having compassion and understanding for when people are losing their shit everywhere. Exactly. Holding exactly. Space for, holding space yeah. for myself when I get frustrated because of other people. You know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> yes, I do. I totally get what you're saying. That holding space is powerful. It's, 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 and I'm glad you said that because that someone told me that and for the first time, I, I heard it before, but I didn't understand that holding space. Holding space is what I was doing that kept that 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 caused blockages for things to for things to um, flow. You know, the, it blocked that energy because not that anything's wrong with it, but it's like hold you, we hold space for people and places and 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 mm -hmm. things that don't serve us. Yes, it doesn't serve mm -hmm. our mm -hmm. wellness. Mm -hmm. and we hold it there and by holding it is almost like you're not allowing for other energies and other things to flow within you to take up that space and lift you mm. so when I was listening to this person tell me this I was like oh my gosh what what <laughs> tears because I'm like I'm holding space why am I holding space for this 
this isn't serving me. And when you release it, wow. when, you, when, you, when you make a decision to release that, mm. what happens is that you, it's like a release. And you think to yourself, why didn't I do this before? <laughs> before. Like, <laughs> why I was calling, you know what I mean? But it's a powerful thing. And I wish mm. a lot of people would, would, would listen to the actual meaning of what holding space is. Mm. You know, it's, it's that, yeah, I'm glad you said that because that's something important. That's mm. something that has changed my life for sure. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And I really love that in this season, we're also finding, uh, I've had a lot of, perhaps uh, 70% of the conversations I've had on this series, we're all talking about language and how important like language it is to find language that resonates, language that moves inside of us. Um, yeah. so it, in, in some ways, validate the ways that we're already thinking and feeling through as people, but like, yeah if we're really going to deconstruct the old world that has long gone, we're going to have to find new tools, new ways, yes. of speaking, new ways of speaking, new ways yeah. of like loving each other and holding each other. Yeah. Um, I agree. So thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, hmm. What you, you spoke about purpose a mm. few lines back. Where yeah. are you finding purpose most these days? Or what are you feeling like you're really like dropping your boots into these days? As far as purpose is concerned. Well, I, I, I would love to tell you what led me here. Yes. I found purpose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I will be, I'm going to be really open and yes. vulnerable in my what i'm gonna say <laughs> but um two nearly two years ago my grandfather passed from cancer um but leading up to his passing i started reiki so it was like a, a few weeks before i started reiki and reiki right. for those who don't know is just a form of energy healing right um through the body uh and so I started Reiki. I was going through a, a breakup, and, and, and a breakup is a best friend, you know what I mean? Um, and going through this thing with my grandfather. And it, it was so hard watching this man who, I mean, I call him my constant because he's my constant. He's still my constant, <laughs> but mm. he is my constant. He was the one who always been there. And I'm watching this person deteriorate and I was like, life isn't fair. Like, what is this? This is, this is not fair. This is wrong. Because here is someone who lived a life of purpose. Here is someone who just lived with so much integrity, kindness, love, compassion. This man, if I tell you his legacy and the things that he has done for his family and his friends and his community mm -hmm. you know i he passed and then i started to learn so much about him even more you know from other people from the, the, the funeral from the week mm -hmm. um and just the stories that people were, were talking about and i said to myself but this man lived a life full of purpose like he knew what he wanted to do he yeah. he made an impact in this world and left such a beautiful legacy. Mm. And <laughs> I'll try not to cry with this, but mm. I, I had one, um, I'll hold it together. <laughs> I, had, I mm -hmm. had my last, con my, my, the, one of the last conversations I had with him, I realized that we were losing him. And I had to tell him basically goodbye. But in doing that, I, I learned something about myself and him because I told him, I was like, Grandpa, I love you. Uh, you are my every, and I'm having this conversation with him and he's like holding my hands and watching me in this loving way. And he says, I'm proud of you. And I was like thinking that he's going to say something. I'm proud of you because what you've accomplished in life. I'm proud because you did this or you did it, or, you know, like, he said, I'm proud of you because through it all, you are such a kind, loving granddaughter. And I was like, oh, 
uh, of everything. You're proud of my love and my kindness. And wow. he was like, don't, don't change that about yourself. Yeah. And I was like, <gasps> I, I, you know, I, I had to hold it together because I also didn't want him to see the, 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 me cry and in that, that state. But it touched me because he saw the power of love. Yes. Wow. The power of kindness and mm -hmm. compassion. Mm -hmm. That is what he lived by. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we could accumulate wealth and you could do this and you have a nice car and you do whatever. He was, it was on another, another, like, it was just, that wasn't it for him. Right. You know, he wanted to have an impact. So then he passed. <laughs> he passed and I was like, I was going through the motions, you know, mm -hmm. I was going through the motions of it and I, I was dealing with other things and then, he, 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 you know, he, he transitioned and I, I went through the motions with the funeral and everything. I, I, I did it, but I don't think I was feeling it. Yes. I wasn't feeling it. Yes. So one morning <laughs> I got up, had a shower, sat on a bed, well, sat again, ready, sat on a bed. And I went like this, literally like this. <sighs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then I couldn't breathe and I couldn't catch my breath and I'm like <gasps> and I was like what is happening right and then I felt tears coming down my eyes mm. and I felt this immense pain in my stomach I felt the light outside started to hit my eyes or pulling the blinds I felt trauma and pain and sadness and anger everything come to the surface all at once listen we've all been here i'm telling you we've all been here i'm just talking about it and letting you all know it's it's real but what i got out of it so there i am like screaming in the pillow like <sighs> punching the pillow because it's anger it's, it's sadness it felt like it was it was lifetimes of pain i was that was surface, surfacing lifetimes like yeah. that's how deep it yeah. was wow that is how deep and i am there in this traumatic state huh? i called my mom because at that time i was living with my mom and i called mom and i said i need you to come home because she had just she left for work so i called her i said mom please and and thankfully i have a mother who's very supportive and understanding she's like Shadi, do you need to go to a doctor mm -hmm. do you need to see right. someone and let me know what and i was like no i want to stay here and face this i just need you to be in the other room yeah <laughs> to hold space so, yeah just need you to know that i just need to know you're there yeah and that was enough for me yeah. and let me tell you this lasted a few hours yeah a few hours of, of of release um and what happened the following few days was i felt something was lifted from me there was a release and what i what i realized is that 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 trauma facing trauma is healing Facing it, feeling it, allowing it to surface, it's healing. So I realized that, oh my God, this thing is so powerful. This, this, this is powerful. Why, why am I, it, it takes resilience. It takes bravery to yes. step into that zone. But I realized, whoa, there's so much to this. Mm -hmm. And, I, and it, it brought me back to, oh, I didn't allow myself to grieve for my grandfather. I didn't allow myself to grieve for... A, a broken relationship. I didn't allow myself to grieve for, you know, all sorts of things, all sorts of traumas, all sorts of life experiences. And I was learning so much about myself and not only about myself, but purpose in my grandfather's legacy, in my experience, my truths wow. led me to a space of, I want to heal. And I collectively want us to heal. So how do I do that? Where do I even begin? Mom said, start with what you have. I have a garden. Let's do this. <laughs> and that's 
kind of where the, the tiny Buddha garden series came. Yeah, just run through all my questions. That's fine. Go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. And that's where tiny Buddha came in. But tiny Buddha, with the answer to your question, is that purpose. Mm -hmm. That's where I found my purpose mm -hmm. because I feel collectively it's a space where we could share, we could connect, we could talk. We could be open. We could change. We, there's so much that could be done in a in a sacred space. Yeah. So that's where now my purpose mm -hmm. is to bring that change. And not not that I'm saying here that I have all the answers. I don't. I'm a student <coughs> like everyone else. But collectively, we can learn from each other. We can. We can. Every single person can. My grandfather taught me that one person could have a huge impact in this world so that's where the purpose came you know full circle for yes. me yeah hmm. so now that we are ready here we are ready here to tell us about your vision and um tiny buddha, tiny buddha garden series that's the name yes yes yeah um, well, who, what when where how um but most <laughs> well you've told us the why right you've given yeah. us the why, but tell us more about it well, it is a space um, that is very sacred to me mm. um, because I feel like there's so many of us hurting silently. So many of us going through so much that we, we don't have the space, as you said, just the narrative of the conversations that we're having now and sometimes not being understood is, is, is you know, it, it, collectively we kind of have to start making that shift to change the narrative so we're understanding each other now mm. um so that space for me is, is an event it, it's in my garden it's once a month obviously with covid i haven't been able to do much but hopefully in a month or two we'll be able to meet in small groups mm -hmm. um but it's a it's a platform yeah it's a platform it's a platform for us to come together mm -hmm. talk discuss feel be vulnerable wow. like literally let us open let us deconstruct this deconstruct the condition narrative and allow each other the freedom to share and i think that's where it's important because the space allows for that that's what it's there for because we can learn from each other and a lot of great things can come out of it you know what i mean it's it, mm. it's it's, it doesn't just stop there. So for me, it's, it's, it, it's contagious. So I want people to come in this space and feel moved and feel loved and the energy shift. And when you go back into your home and you show love and you have that conversation, this is what I did today, I did it, and you share that, and then that person might get up and go to work. And then in work, they talk to the next person. You know what? I learned da, 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 mm -hmm. And it keeps going. It mm -hmm. keeps going and it's going to keep growing. Yes. And it, it is, it is, um, I do have a vision for it. And my, my vision is an actual space, um, a space for collective to come together to, to, for me to, for us to meet, to, to, you know, it could be Reiki healing. It could be dancing. It could be sharing. It could be, you know, um, one-on-one -on -one sessions, just, you know, it, that's what the space is for. It's for community and for for um, spiritual, you know, wellness, a place to uplift each other. Uh, my vision is that, you know. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that's really, really, really beautiful. And also just like a real refreshing, refreshing vision for the future. So thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I was thinking about, there's this quote that says, um, the revolution will be embodied. Oh. So I'm thinking about how are the ways that, so we, we generally, when I say we, I don't know who the we is, but we have practice. We know who we is. We don't know who we is. That's why we're here. Um, <laughs> eggs leaking. Um, so we have practices, we have ritual, we have things that we do to mm -hmm. keep, to maintain, to expand ourselves, to root mm -hmm. ourselves. Um, how have these practices been embodied so that they have 
transformed your life or your existence or yeah and like in, in multi-dimensional ways not just this not just now but like how have you seen this no real broad yeah. question that's going everywhere it, but it's a broad but i i totally understand and i think um we all have this innate connection with with source with our ancestors um as a child, I felt even more connected. And, and I do believe children are, they have this innate ability to live authentically. Um, and I feel sometimes, like I felt as a child, I had this connection, like this understanding of of my past, of who I am, of my power, of my ancestors, of, you know, and I, I do feel that some, and, and as the time has transitioned, it's almost, I've not allowed myself to feel that until now, until I decided to tap into that again. And it's been, it's it sometimes, it took a long time to get here, as I said, because we wear these masks. We, you know, we have, we, we go on our journey of discovery. Yeah. Um, but that journey has brought me to a place of certain practices and rituals that has kept me connected. And mudras. Um, there you are. Huh? And yes. mudras. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> That has, has brought me here, and I feel like it, it sounds strange, but collectively, the con that that consciousness, I feel we're all feeling that now. Yes, it it something has been lifted. Uh, I hate to say a shift has happened, but something has been lifted. <laughs> a shift has happened. Something has been lifted that is allowing us now mm -hmm. to really tap into it. Mm -hmm. And it is, it starts with yourself first. I feel like to tap into it takes practice. Yes. It's rituals. It yeah. takes really cracking open those, like, you know, cracking those bones and that feeling and lifting yourself so that you could feel and listen and hear wow. what it takes we're supposed to do because we all know it we all feeling it we're all it's like a vibration that is happening now mm -hmm. and has been sorry but even more so now it, it it's what is stopping you from not feeling and seeing it is you yes because there is 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 right there and i'm feeling that revolution and that um that you're speaking about um collectively we're 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 doing it we are you know it, it's 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 happening mm. but it's happening but you need to also make it happen like it's like it's innating you intention right yes intention and and that's what i'm saying is so important and i know this sounds cheesy but that self-love <laughs> that's Understanding who you are, knowing who you are, knowing your power and your strength would allow you to connect with it. Yes. And in connecting with it, you connect with it. You know, um, practices. I, 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 I have a lot of practices and rituals and, and other things that I do to keep myself grounded, connected um, with source. Because for me, I have to live it. For me, this is living it. I have to live it. There's no pretending. There's no mask. There's no, I need to authentically be this person all the time. It's mm -hmm. not, I'm not hiding who I am anymore. I, I, w I refuse to do it, you know? So I think we all have to get to that point and then it just gets stronger. Yes. And I <laughs> we feel get like, stronger. <laughs> absolutely. And I feel like definitely we're in a time where if we wasn't doing it before, it is a massive invitation to get to get it together so that we could be like these integrated beings and like show up as ourselves a hundred percent of the time um 
within our strangeness, within the ways that we don't necessarily ascribe to what has been given yeah. to us in the ways that we're different, in the ways that we choose, we're choosing difference. Yeah, um, with, said that. Yeah, yeah, with some like secret um, <laughs> the lying hope that, you know, that we could share these gifts with other people and that they find resonance within it as well. So yeah. absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So you said I mean, something about, uh-huh. No, I'm saying I totally agree with you. That it is um, right. Stepping forward. Mm hmm So you spoke about like your childhood and then like coming back. And in oh. your um, in your description for Tiny Buddha Garden series, you spoke about it as being a sort of retrieval. Um, mm -hmm. and and I guess finding back, finding yourself back, right? Um. Minus all the masks, mm -hmm. as you so beautiful. Yeah, and we're also mm -hmm. right now in a season of so many planetary retrogrades, and we're having so many lessons from the past to show up. Um, and I keep seeing you with a shovel. I don't know why. <laughs> we're talking about gardens, right? So here we are. Um, <laughs> what are the things that you are? What are you shoveling, Shade? Like, that's the question that wants to come to. Like, I don't know if you're digging up. I don't know if you're putting into the ground. I don't know if you're planting. I don't know if you're uprooting. I don't know. You're just in my mind with a shovel. Hi. Yeah, I, it, I think it's, it's a lot of things that are happening. Mm -hmm. um, planting roots, for sure. Grounding, not only myself, but grounding my my sense of self um but also going through death life cycles and allowing myself to go through it through the trauma so it it is difficult to face that it, it, it takes a lot of resilience but i i i fully believe